You go. I want her to come back. I'll carry you. Mummy is dead, Hugo. You'll never see her again. Go away! Ah, Hugo, go! Leave Anya, me alone. don't take too long. I hate you. It's for your own good, I'm Hugo. I'm sorry, I'm sick. We've come back. Everything is all right. Anybody that's familiar with my channel knows my preference for games with a heavy emphasis on mechanics and how they encourage players to interact with the worlds that they play in. However, I also have a sweet tooth for story-driven games such as Telltale Narratives, Detroit or Heavy Rain, or even Danganronpa. It is ever so rare that you run across a game that manages to intermingle both of these delectable treats into a cohesive experience where neither sours in your mouth, resulting in a craving for the other. This leads us to the center of today's discussion, A Plague Tale Innocence, the award-winning title by Asobo Studio, a developer previously disregarded by the medium's consumers as unnoteworthy due to creating licensed games such as Wally and Ratatouille. A Plague Tale unsuspectedly broke onto the gaming landscape in 2019, turning the studio previously known for adorable mice into one that took the mantle of creating gaming's most terrifying infestation of rats. Asobo Studios succeeds in melding a compelling, if at some points predictable, story that enthralls you in the fate of its characters while supplying players with an ever-increasing pool of tactics to employ against puzzles and enemies alike. You follow the tale of Amicia and Hugo, estranged siblings from a rich family in medieval France. No time is wasted in establishing character relationships with one another, with Amicia and her father bonding over a hunting trip for a pig. It isn't long before tragedy eviscerates the smile-inducing adventure into a bloody corpse, as both a plague and a mysterious band of religious zealots destroy everything the siblings hold dear. They're forced to venture forth on a countrywide journey while facing danger and hostility every step of the way. The game's expert pacing never leaves a dull moment in story beats, with new characters and plot developments occurring at just the perfect moments to persuade players to just keep on playing for 10 more minutes. The characters are believable, albeit somewhat reliant on tropes. Some are definitely better than others. However, this isn't a major detriment as the cast of Amicia and Hugo are more than enough to carry the weight of the journey, with Amicia providing a realistic perspective perspective of an orphan child in a plague-ridden war-torn France, and Hugo driving the intrigue of the inner machinations and lore of the world. Some minor setbacks occur with developments occurring from blatantly poor character decisions, such as overhearing secrets from allies. This would be more forgivable if it didn't happen on more than one occasion. A Plague Tale utilizes numerous elements of other games to coalesce into a masterclass example of intermingled systems, including puzzles, stealth, and resource management. The beauty of these systems stem from them all being rooted from Amicia's ever-increasing arsenal, with each one being a multi-purpose tool. Amicia's weapon pull starts off limited, only being capable of creating distractions or killing unhelmeted guards with her initially slow and noisy slingshot. This later expands to include the ability to create and extinguish light sources, forcing foes to remove their helmets and exposing themselves to death, as well as commanding rats to ravage a selected location. In combat, these tools turn battles into a tactical puzzle within their own right, as players are forced to dance between removing armor, killing, and exposing enemies to the ravenous legions of rats. The rats themselves provide a fair amount of puzzle scenarios that typically revolve around the usage of the motif of light, which serve as a deterrent to the scourge. Utilizing and destroying light sources to manipulate the plague of rats in isolated areas or killing enemies is a source of amusement that most other games are unable to emulate. The Chateau Courtyard section is a standout moment of this puzzle design, as it forces you to retraverse through the environment time and time again with the same interactable apparatuses to slowly divide and segregate the rodent affliction away from your path. Knocking objects loose, creating lights, utilizing torches, and moving environmental objects are weaved seamlessly into the tapestry of puzzles. Across the board, there is satisfying joy to partake in, with pieces in the environment serving as diegetic solutions instead of abstractions, with each new ability increasing your capabilities with the world. Your tools require finite resources, which on normal difficulty are in much more of an ample supply than is required, ensuring that players consistently have the assets they require. This is a slight critique and should be easily remedied by a higher difficulty. Multiple tools require the same resources in order to be crafted, forcing players to pick and choose which is required most at any given moment. This also comes into play with a sparse upgrading system which takes heavy investments in order to implement, resulting in a wallet-strapped budget for little else. This subtly pushes players to use the bare minimum to pass encounters, and the investments in upgrading will pay in dividends later on. This is most exemplified by attacks such as Luminom, 
which take an incredible amount of material to craft. It essentially saves you from a game over, but the setback from utilizing it will wish that you were the one being devoured instead of your resources. The game even outright suggests that you use this sparingly, noting that you should be focusing on upgrades instead of abusing your abilities. Additional materials are available by going out of your way to murder foes, which become an ever-increasing occasion as the tale continues. The transformation from vulnerable orphan to guerrilla warfighter is felt by the player, as the ascending levels of aggression is reciprocated by Amicia, whose actions are called into question by her companions. The icing on top of the cake is that a plague tale is a gorgeous nightmare to be enveloped in, with the PC version being nothing short of a technical and artistic masterpiece, especially considering the developer's relative lack of pedigree and small team size. The rats themselves are a visual showstopper, with thousands being able to appear on screen while rapidly climbing over one another seamlessly to create an anxiety-inducing ebb and flow of death. With stellar characters and pacing complemented by an interweaved game design that utilizes common verbs for both puzzles and combat, The Plague Tale is a must-play. The attention to detail is absurdly wonderful. The developers even went out of their way to create the most realistic and disgusting depiction of pig testicles to date. I even have the world's first exclusive from the developers themselves, confirming that this was indeed an important detail for the team. 